Good morning. All around the place. Can everybody hear okay? Good deal. We welcome you to 4th of July weekend. Those of you worshiping here, those of you worshiping with us on the live stream. Again today, for various reasons, we are in one spot with one shot. For those of you that are watching, so we're not moving around. That's why everything is in this position. Happy to have you. Hope everyone is having a great 4th of July weekend. Announcements on the back of the bulletin after the June that we have had. And I, my wife says every week you say, be sure to read the Reeks in News because it has so much news in it. I like to make it, you know, not the same thing, but gosh, we had the greatest June. It's just... We uh, were really busy. Tony probably said, Tony, a lot of others say, man, I'm glad it's over. And a lot of people worked too with the bikers and then with, with the uh, community choir program this past week. But I think that's just what it's all about. You reach out into the community and reach out to the community. Noodle delivery is next week. The noodle bin is down on the glass top in the vestibule. If you have noodles, drop them off. If you have money, that's just as good. Shirley doesn't mind buying a noodle. She gets special deals and things like this and, and uh, just put there's money in that there to put into the envelopes. Third Sunday, Fellowship Potluck. Hopefully, we can make that come off. That'll be on the 17th. And if so, this will be the first one we've had since early in 2020. And this just be a traditional potluck in, the, in Fellowship Hall. The following Sunday is, well, I guess we're still pretty busy, aren't we? The following Sunday is Christmas in July, which has been an annual occurrence here, at least since I came here in 2002, and something that I think we very much enjoy. So that will be on, actually, it's on the 25th of July, so it will be exactly five months before Christmas. Then the next Sunday, I'm taking Sunday off, Reverend Jane Connell Young is going to fill the pulpit that Sunday, and we've got a great July in front of us. Just note any announcements, please look at the week's in news. We have a lot in there, a lot going on, and we welcome all of you everywhere to our service of worship. Sally? If you please stand, we'll have our invocation. Dear loving God, we gather together on this first Sunday of July. As we celebrate our country's birthday, remember, get ready, ready our heart to do your will, not our will, but your will. We have many freedoms, and we remember the many men and women who gave their lives to protect us, open our eyes and help us to help those who are tired, the poor, those struggling, and those certainly in these trying times. Look around us and see the beauty of the earth as we offer our praise to you in word and song and prayer. As we pray the Lord's Prayer together today, we pray in unity. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. If you would remain standing, we're going to now stand and have a pledge to the flag. Put your hand over your heart as we pledge the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, 
one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. If you would remain standing, we are going to do a little bit different this morning. We all know the Star Spangled Banner. I don't have the first verse printed in here, but I do have the second verse. We're going to sing two verses and really sing loud. We'll sing the first verse and the second verse. be seated. I will be doing the children's moments from, from the pulpit today, and I'm talking to all the children at home and all of you all here too. There's no children here, but I'm still going to address the adults here. Um, on, the, on this 3rd of July Sunday, I was going to say 4th of July Sunday, but we celebrate 4th of July. We have patriotism in our heart. Patri patriotism is a big word, and it's like many words that we have throughout the year, but we show patriotism in the way we love our country. That's what patriotism means, love for our country. And like many things that we have in our, in our world, in our society, in our community, things around us, we need to, it's important to celebrate that all year round, not just on the 3rd of July or not just on our nation's birthday, but on other days every day of the year. doesn't have to be a special day. You can have the love for your country in your heart every day of the year. Can we bow our heads for a word of prayer? Dear loving God, please be with us this week as we go through this week and let us remember to carry in our heart that patriotism, that love for our country. We have love for many things. We have love for our parents. We have love for our children. We have love for all others around us. It is important to express that love. In all our prayers, may thy will be done. In Jesus' name, amen. Navigating around back here is something of a challenge. There's enough stuff to make you trip over. Believe me, if you can trip over it, I can do it, but I'll try not to. Prayer time. Please turn with me to the back of the bulletin, and I'm going to start something new next week, too. We're going to include the birthdays in the bulletin, since I perpetually forget them. So we're going to have them in the bulletin. That way I may, I may be able to remember. Catching up on June... 
26th, Ray McIntyre had a birthday. And on the 27th, Dr. Bob Newell, Dr. Barb, called her Bob, Barb Newell, Barb had a birthday, and we wish them happy birthday. July the 2nd, yesterday, Miranda Arnold had a birthday, and on July the 5th, Tanya Smith is having a birthday. So we want to remember all of those. As we begin our prayer list, we want to start with remembering those police officers were the, were the victims of the senseless shooting, just as any shooting is senseless, whether it's police officers, whether whoever it is, civilians. It just seems to be that the senselessness pervades these days that folks feel that if they don't agree with what somebody is saying or doing, they can just take out the gun and shoot them. So we want to pray for those families. That is just absolutely tragic. I can't imagine I've always heard police officers, the protocols and everything that you need to announce yourself and so forth. These poor guys never had a chance to do anything. The guy just, as we know, opened fire and killed. I think, I believe three, wasn't it? Three, finally. Two were killed and one has died since. So we want to remember them and their families. Penny Smith called me last night. Sally Dugit, who many of you know, some don't, but she's a longtime member of this church. She's in the hospital. Sally or Penny wants us to remember, remember her. Dale Jackson is, he comes with his wife, Judy, to the community choir. Faithfully, he comes and sits and, and uh, supports us, but he has had some problems in the last week and is hospitalized right now, and we want to remember Dale and Judy. Susan Quigley, Molly, is there anything that you wanted to add about that? that co-worker with the lung vibes. Rachel Race, Jason's sister, is she getting better from the break that she had? Is I don't know. Camby Perkins, Tony, any update there? That, okay. Jim Bruce, Simidor's dad. If you follow Simidor on Facebook, you know that he's had some surgery and at last count is recovering and the recovery is slow. Those battling COVID, which seems to be rampant again amongst us, we need to be judicious about what we do to protect ourselves for that. Please remember all these folks, and remember, too, those that are here on the prayer list. I want to remember the nation at this time of the year, the celebration of our 246th birthday. Let's pause for a moment of quiet meditation. Our Father God, we thank you for this time of quiet, of meditation, and of prayer. This can be a hectic weekend, a holiday weekend, much going on here in our community of Warsaw, a lot of festivities and fellowship all of the things that help us to celebrate our country's birthday. We pray that you might be with everyone during this weekend, and especially those, oh God, who are on the prayer list here. We gather in this place as we do each week, and as we do with those who watch and will watch the service. And we wonder how we can better serve you through serving others, because it is in through serving others that we grow in our faith ourselves. We simply cannot throw our hands in the air and say, oh, I'm fine. I know I've got a great relationship with you, with Jesus. I know I'm going to be fine when I go to heaven. I don't have to worry about anything else. Fortunately, there are a few that do that, but 
prayerfully, not many. We want to put that into tangible action by reaching out into the community, by opening our doors, by helping those who are in need. Oh God, as we move further into the, now into the second half of this year, we continue to look for ways that we can do that. Because as we've said and prayed so many times, the way the church used to do things, did for many, many years and decades, no longer works as it once did. Now we have to seize opportunities. We have to seize what we can do to, to further enhance our message and not to dig a hole and say, this is the way it's always been and this is the way we're going to keep it. Because we see and hear, oh God, of too many churches that are having to close their doors because of one reason or another, and one of those reasons is sometimes just it's too painful to embrace change. Help us, O oh God, to embrace change. That is change with you. We come to this house today and we carry our own challenges. We don't talk about them to everyone. We might talk about them to those closest to us. We might only talk about them with you. But hear our prayers, hear our prayers, not just those for others. They are important. They are a part of what we do. But we want you to hear our prayer too, if it's just opening our heart. Because we cannot serve completely if we don't feel complete ourselves. If we don't feel as if we are happy and satisfied in doing what we can do. We come here and we ask your blessings upon these families that have lost loved ones tragically the past week, both in law enforcement and, as we read in the news, in other civil unrest. We pray that you would bless this country, too, as the divide continues to grow, that we can find some way once again to as the late Skip Smith was fond of saying, that we can agree to disagree and do it agreeably. We pray that you, O oh God, can help God us direct us, and we will open your hearts to you. In all these things, we ask it. Amen. Diana Bradley is our soloist today. She had to move to the center part of the church because of the location. And she's going to bring us Petra. We're glad you were in town. We thought you might have left. And Shirley said, oh, Diana's in town. So <laughs> here we are. Thank you, Diana. Thank you. Um, as you're going to find out here soon it, as part of the sermon, the Statue of Liberty has a tablet. The Statue of Liberty, of course, offers freedom. But the tablet in her arms says, give me your tired, your poor, and it goes on. Well, God has a tablet that also offers freedom, salvation. Of course, the tablet is the Ten Commandments. But God also says, come unto me, and I will give you rest. And that's the name of this song. <clears throat> Get my papers lined up here. Hear the blessed Savior calling the oppressed. O oh, ye heavy laden, come to me and rest. Come no longer tarry, I your load will bear. Bring me every burden, bring me every care. Come unto me, I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, hear me and be blessed. I am meek and lowly, come and trust my might. Come, my yoke is easy and my burden light. Are you disappointed, wandering here and there, dragging chains of doubt and loaded down with care? Do unholy feelings struggle in your breast? Bring your case to Jesus, he will give you rest. 
come unto me, I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, hear me and be blessed. I am weak and lowly, come and trust my might. Come, my yoke is easy, and my burden light. Stumbling on the mountains, dark with sin and shame. Stumbling toward the pit of hell's consuming flame. By the power of sin, deluded and oppressed. Hear the tender Savior, come to me and rest. Come unto me, I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, hear me and be blessed. I am meek and lowly, come and trust my might. Come, my yoke is easy and my burden light. Have you by temptation often conquered been? Has a sense of weakness brought distress within? Christ will sanctify you if you claim his best. In the Holy Spirit he will give you rest. Come unto me, I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, hear me and be blessed. I am weak and lowly, come and trust my might. Come, my yoke is easy, and my burden light. Diane is a vital member of our community choir. For the 4th of July program, then she does something tacky, like going back to Florida for the winter. And uh, I don't know, maybe you could just stay a little longer until we get the Christmas program done. She's got a great voice, what a great contribution. Thank you. All of the soloists, Laura, Bobby, Diana, anybody else, Joe, that would volunteer that wants to sing, that would be fine. <laughs> Joe looks up, smiles, and lays, puts his head back down. Thank you very much for that. Let me pray. Our Father, we pray that the words of our mouths, the meditations of our heart, might be acceptable in your sight. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. Tonight I begin with this, and I want to also. We have three readings today. One is the what's written on the Statue of Liberty. The second is from the book of Matthew 22, 37 through 39, our mantra, and the final from Genesis. They're all in your bullet. This, as we celebrate our 246th birthday, this is, I think, the theme on which this country was founded. This is the theme that we steadfastly across our history have embraced and as time goes on goes ahead we've run upon some rough times here I don't think there's anybody unless you've been in a cave somewhere without any communication that doesn't realize this rather than being drawn closer together it seems that we're drawn further apart if we don't all look alike if we don't all talk alike if we don't all worship alike, then those who don't worship look, talk like me, they're wrong. And that is just something that we have got as Christians to work very, very hard to do, and as Americans. There are those who say that church and state should be constantly kept separated. 
to a point, yes. You, some of you here will remember, and some of you out there will probably remember from other churches, there have always been battles in churches as to whether or not the American flag should be in the sanctuary. There are those, usually the minister who says, no, the American flag shouldn't. Well, you'll never hear that from me. I feel like this. The church and the state, if it wasn't for America, we couldn't worship freely. This country of which we are a part and we're all a part. And if it wasn't for the church, we wouldn't have the basis of faith that we do. So why can't we, why can't we just all worship together and have a common goal, a common aim? I want to begin, Diana reflected on this at the beginning of her piece of music. This is what's written on the base of the Statue of Liberty. We sang this powerful song the other night, I felt like, Give Me Your Tired, Your Poor, at the Community Choir Concert. And it is the words of Emma Lazarus and the New Colossus that is written on the base of the Statue of Liberty. The music was Irvin Berlin from a musical called Miss Liberty. And it just moves. It's, it's what I think we are about. Not just as Americans, but as Christians. It's what we should be about. Not like the brazen giant of Greek fame with conquering limbs astride from land to land. Here at our sea-washed sunset gates shall stand a mighty woman with a torch whose flame is the imprisoned lightning and her name, Mother of Exiles. From her beacon hand glows worldwide welcome. Her mild eyes command the air-bridged harbor that twin towers twin cities frame. Keep ancient lands your storied pomp, cries she with silent lips. Give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe free, the wretched refuge of your teeming shore. Send these, the homeless, Tempest tossed to me, I lift my lamp beside the golden door. New Colossus by Emma Lazarus. These words, at some point in time, every one of our ancestors, we too were pilgrims. We too were immigrants. Some of our ancestors stood at Staten Island and signed and came from other countries and moved into this great land, the great land of opportunity. People still look at this as the great land of opportunity. Certainly we're challenged, but our challenges are such that folks say, give me a chance there. So how, as Christians, do we not accept people and call ourselves Christians? How do we do that? If someone can tell me how, we can say, you can come, you can't, you're right, you're wrong, you're good, you're bad, you're like me, you're not, how we can do that and then at the same time wave this great book in the air and talk about being a Christian. Because nothing that Jesus did, that he said, reflected that. That passage of scripture that I read so often from the 22nd chapter of the Gospel of Matthew. I ought to have it emblazoned on my office door on a plaque. Jesus is asked, what's the greatest commandment, and so forth. What's, what should you do? And he said to them, 37, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the first commandment. 
the great commandment. And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Where does it say? Tell me, folks. Tell me out yonder. Tell me, world. Where does it say, love your neighbor as yourself as long as you look like me, as long as you talk like me, as long as you worship like me? Where does it say that? I don't find it here. I do not find it in this passage of Scripture. Emma Lazarus, I don't know the history enough of this, some of you probably do, wrote this poem, perhaps not specifically, but it fit the great Statue of Liberty in New York Harbor. Because it fit. Because this was what America was founded on. To me, that's what Christianity was founded on. When people come into this church to visit, to stay, to worship, whether it's online, whether it's here, whether it's someone out in the street, do we ask them, first of all, what nationality are you? Do you worship the same way that I do? Do you do this like me, that like me? We've got to all be just exactly alike, it seems as we are heading today, all be just exactly alike. And so that I'm teetering right here, Brian, on the edge of political speaking, <laughs> I'm going to pull away from that a little bit because I really get, if anybody get impassioned about the fact that we are becoming so divided, so divided in what we are doing, and then there's just fire being thrown on this all the time. We as Christians, right here, we didn't check to see, Tony, what, did, what church those folks from the Fuller Bible Institute, the, the bicyclists, what the church they went to, whether or not they were Christians. We didn't check to see, well, are they of this race or that race? All of them have got to be white Christians. No one said that. No one ever would here, at least. We didn't ask. They needed our help. We were able to provide it. That, to me, is what... The church is about, if you want to separate, there is no separation. That's what America is about. That's what the church is about. Our polar star, to me, and I've said this so many times, you say, oh, gosh, Phil, would you please quit talking about our polar star? Barton W. Stone, who was one of the great founders of the Christian church, he talked about the polar star. The polar star for Barton Stone was Christian unity. He had this grand idea, didn't work, but he had it, that all churches, all denominations should be just alike and be able to worship the same. We tried that for years, even into the point when I was at the seminary, it was still going wild. We were trying to do it, but we couldn't because we are too different. Some people want to take communion every Sunday. Some people want to pass it. Some people want to do it like this. Some people want to drink out of the cup whatever it is. There are too many different things. There are minor things. That's minor. What we need to do is to be able to say this is our focus. This is our focus. The third point of this is here. And this is in the book of Genesis. You don't have to, if you can find it, that's fine. If not, it's, I'm not going to read very much at all. This is in the fourth chapter because I'm just really going to focus on a half a verse. Here's the real point that I think we have. This is God talking after the Cain and Abel situation. And he asked Cain, he says, where's your brother Abel? Here's what the question is. Here's what the question is to you, to you, to me, to the world. Am I my brother's keeper? Am I my brother's keeper? Translate that into modern lingo that says, am I responsible for you? Am I responsible to take care of you? Are you responsible for me? Am I my brother's keeper? Well, it would seem to me, and I know I'm not the smartest old boy in the box, but it would seem to me that if you look at that passage from Matthew and Jesus says, love your neighbor as yourself after loving God with all your heart, then what's the answer to am I my brother's keeper? The answer is, yes, I am. 
my brother and my sister. I want to close. I'm going to read a hymn, and, and Shirley's going to play as I read it. If you would like to read along with it, this is hymn number 350 in the hymnal. And as I was working on this, finishing this up yesterday, this hymn just came to me because the words of it combine what we are talking about in our responsibility to God and in our responsibility to others. The title of it is, I Bind My Heart This Time. The words were by Lachlan McLean Watt, 1907, and the music by Grace Wilbur Conant, also in 1927. I bind my heart this time to the Galilean side, to the wounds of Calvary, to the Christ who died for me. I bind my soul this day to the brother far away and the sister near at hand in this town and in this land. I bind my heart in thrall to the God the Lord of all. To the God, the poor one's friend, hear that, and the Christ who God did send. I bind myself to peace, to make strife and envy cease. God, knit thou sure the cord, my thraldom, my attachment, my dedication, my attachment to my Lord. May the Lord have his blessing to that message and to the reading and the hearing of his word. May we pray. Our Father God, I know that sometimes, personally, I get impassioned about things and I get impassioned with regard to this. It's so easy for us to look at other people and say, you don't look like me, you don't talk like me. You don't go to church where I do. You don't live where I do. You're different. I don't like you. I don't want to be around you. And then to come to church and to stand and sing of Jesus on Calvary, of the blessings that he gave of coming to die for us in the same way that we just rejected someone. Pray, O oh God, that's not us. Help us, if it is, to overcome it. Not everyone is alike. Even in our own number, no one has exactly the same gifts, perhaps the same goals, the same aims. But we come together in your name, and we bind our hearts this time to the Galilean side. In Jesus' name, we pray and ask and implore you respectfully to open our hearts, to open our minds, to see and to hear what you would have us do today and every day. In his name we ask it. Amen. Our hymn of invitation this morning and our welcome to communion. Mine eyes have seen the glory. We're going to stand and sing this great song of America as we celebrate the birthday of the church. Hymn number four, 705, 705, we'll stand and sing all the verses.
we come to the time in our service where we gather around the Lord's table. Everyone is invited to participate in the Lord's Supper. It is a wonderful time to remember all the, what, the great sacrifices that Jesus made for us. And remember, we have heard some great words today. And in Christ, there is no east or west, in him no north or south. But we are one community, and this is one way that we can celebrate. We are one community at the Lord's Supper. I did want to note first, we have changed our communion a little bit, have, have different units, communion units. And don't open them yet. Just wait. Be sure and turn the, the wine upside down because we are going to partake of the, of the bread first. And they're easier to open, so I, th I think the, that they'll be good. If you bow your head for a word of prayer, we'll prepare our hearts and minds for communion. Dear loving God, please be with us today as we partake of these emblems, these emblems of grape juice and the living bread. It is, let it be food for our souls, food for our bodies as we go out and we do service for you. In all our prayers, we pray that thy will be done. In Jesus' name, amen. And on that night of the Last Supper, Jesus gathered with his disciples in the upper room and he took the bread and he blessed it and he broke it and he passed it among them saying, Take, eat, for this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us take the living bread together and remember Jesus. And in like manner, Jesus took the cup, and he passed it among his disciples, saying, Take drink, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for the many, for the forgiveness of sins. And as often as you eat the bread, and you do drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. Let us take the fruit of the vine together and remember Jesus. Let us pray. Dear loving God, as we leave this sanctuary today, we have had wonderful word, wonderful songs. There, are, there is a wonderful message in all of the songs that we heard today, and wonderful message. Let us go out and spread the good news of Jesus amongst those amongst us. We can do that in a smile. We can lend a smile to a person. You pass someone on the street, just smile at them. It will show that you care. And in all our prayers, we pray that thy will be done. In Jesus' name, amen. or a chalice. It's supposed to be a chalice. <laughs> Shirley said it was an hourglass, but it can be either one. I thought it was good that Sally pointed out too, please don't open the wine first and then turn it over <laughs> and open the bread. We decided to get these because they're a little bit more convenient, a little bit easier to work with. We have had it in the past and have tried it again, a spirit of time when we shake and visit and so forth. I would encourage you to do that after we conclude the service, it's kind of hard to do it with the service and the live stream because the live stream folks can't do anything except just wonder what's going on. So you can stay. I'll see you all downstairs. Let's pray together. Our Father God, thank you for all that you do for us. Thank you for the blessings. Let us take time during this festive week to ponder our acceptance of people everywhere that aren't like us and those who are. Go with us now. Bless those in need. In Jesus' name we ask it.